Welcome to Churchill's painting studio here at Chartwell, where he was able to indulge in the hobby that he called a joyride in a paint box. Churchill painted well over 500 canvases during his lifetime, and we have about a third of his total output as an artist here at Chartwell, with over 140 here in the studio alone. As part of our major project over the last three years, we have been able to undertake a redisplay of this space in order to bring it more into the look and feel that Churchill knew it during his lifetime. When Chartwell first opened the studio in 1968, the space looked very different to how you see it today. A lot of the walls had been whitewashed and there were far fewer paintings, so it felt much more sparse by comparison. We were very fortunate over the decades that followed to have a number of paintings gifted to us in the bequests of Lady Churchill, her daughter Sarah and her youngest daughter Mary. And as a result, we saw an increasing number of paintings here to really enrich the display. However, there was never an overall rethink of the display of this space during that time. And it's only now that we've been able to completely redisplay it which has included, amongst other things, reinstalling some of the original infrastructure and shelving, stripping back the paint layers to bring back the original oak which Churchill had here and which created a frame effect for his canvases, and also change the order in which the paintings are displayed. First of all, to bring more key pieces down to easier sight lines for our visitors, but also to recreate Churchill's own hang and his wonderful display of the space, which really is a kaleidoscope of colour. In terms of the riot of colour that you see in this room, it's reflected in Churchill saying once that he rejoiced in the brilliant colours and felt genuinely sorry for the poor browns, which is why when you look around the studio today, it really does show the joy and the exuberance with which he was able to approach painting. Among the paintings redisplayed and brought down to easier sightlines for our visitors is one of Churchill's most important paintings. It is his first ever painting, and it's this one here, Ho Farm, painted in 1915. The context of it is that Churchill is painting whilst staying in Ho Farm with his family, and he sees his sister-in-law, Gooney Churchill, painting with watercolours, and is inspired and decides to try and take up the hobby himself. Beyond the stay at Ho Farm, the wider context of that summer is that Churchill is out of political favour. He has by that point been largely scapegoated for the Dardanelles military disaster. And Clementine, his wife, said at one point that she thought he would die of grief. Winston, however, reflects on that summer with a more positive tone by saying that the muse of painting came to his rescue. And the result of which is this very accomplished first endeavour into his new hobby. Coming forward a few years, we have Churchill's only ever self-portrait. It's a remarkable composition, very striking, and one of the reasons for its style is that he's being heavily influenced by his friend, the artist Sir John Lavery, at that time. And one of Sir John Lavery's hallmarks is having a very brightly lit figure in the centre of the canvas and a dark background around it. So you can see that Churchill has applied this method to his self-portrait. You can also see that it's a very young depiction of him. He still has the red hair after all. But there's also the fact that this is said to be a metaphor. He is still rebuilding his political career following the Dardanelles. He is still on the ascendancy and working his way back up the ranks to try and get to the level he was before the First World War. And so there he is, shrouded in darkness, and yet there is light through his painting. Moving on from the self-portrait, we come to the years in which Churchill is exploring different techniques and ways of developing as an artist. The ruins of Arras Cathedral, for example, is a copy of a John Singer Sargent painting and a method by which, through seeing how other artists depicted scenes, he could then improve himself. We also have the magic lantern technique, which is where you put a photograph negative into a magic lantern and it blasts the image onto the canvas so you can recreate it. 
And really, this is an exercise in developing your ability to depict three dimension. So it's a way of improving rather than for the end product itself. But it's always interesting to see which photographs Churchill has chosen to recreate. And in this case, it's a lovely scene of a parrot with a number of children looking up in wonder. We also have the grid technique, which alongside the magic lantern was introduced to Churchill by Walter Sickett. The grid technique is particularly good if you want to do portraits but don't necessarily have a sitter. And what's wonderful about that one is that Churchill has left the grid in order to show the fact that it is part of this exercise. And he's picked a photograph at himself at a horse racing meeting. This is in the late 20s by this point, so perhaps Churchill, by that point busy as Chancellor of the Exchequer, enjoyed recreating an image of him at rest. And lastly, we have the application of the grid technique in the painting Mary's first speech. And this is a wonderful family moment where Mary is laying the foundation stone of what would later become the Mary Cot, the playhouse that exists to this day in the kitchen garden at Chartwell. And it's such a wonderful family moment. You've got Randolph, Mary and Winston, and it says a great deal that he felt it was such an important moment he had to capture it on canvas. Across this row we explore some of Churchill's later paintings and styles, from Impressionism to holiday painting. But there's one in particular I would like to introduce you to, and it's my favourite here in the studio. It's called View of Chartwell. It was painted in 1938 and it sees Winston Churchill taking his canvas, easel and oil paints to the northernmost corner of the estate. So he's looking out across his gardens and beyond that the Weald of Kent. It's an autumnal day so you can imagine it's very chilly but the light is so beautiful that Churchill is determined to capture it. Now, it's been a difficult year for the Churchill family. At one point earlier in the year, they were considering having to sell Chartwell and it was briefly listed on the market. By the autumn, however, his finances looking somewhat healthier, he knew he would be able to keep Chartwell. So there's a sense of relief, I think, to this painting as well, that the home he loved so much would continue to remain with him and his family. But beyond that, 1938, of course, the clouds of war are forming across Europe. And beyond that Weald of Kent is the south coast, the Channel and mainland Europe beyond. So perhaps Churchill picked this angle, looking out across the home he loved so much, knowing that if an invasion of England were to happen, this landscape might well be changed forever. The project that we have undertaken here in the studio has allowed us to revisit how Churchill engaged with his own paintings, how he showed them to friends and family, and perhaps most importantly, the fact that what we see before us is a visual diary. Churchill didn't write a diary, but he did paint one, and that's what you can see in the studio at Chartwell today. <laughs>